hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 2 and today i'm going to be giving you part 11 of what if naruto had the rarest bloodline remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the new episode of what if naruto was betrayed by Hagoromo over an anime king 3 and enjoy that guys and also stay in tune for a new episode coming over anime king later on for you guys to enjoy and yeah if you're new you heard that right i have three channels anime king anime king 2 anime king 3 which i post on every single night for you guys to enjoy so go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and support remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new i'll be replying talking about to all of you so yeah, without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro! So the last time we left off, going home, Kushina had remembered the question that Naruto had asked her as she told him that she wanted to get stronger and train so she can become the next leader of darkness and protect everyone. As Naruto smiled at that, a month passed as everything was hectic with a snowstorm going on outside. As Sawaki was walking up by the seal in her arm, as Naruto asked if she needed help but she told him it was fine, she made her way as she was alerted that stone ninjas had snuck inside. Four of them were on her own as 11 of them were captured. She quickly phoned the others as she brought them back. It seems like Oniki wanted him to blow up the civilian building just to cause mayhem so he can find out what exactly made darkness tick. Naruto had warned him to send his man back but Oniki did not so Naruto sent them back in boxes and now he wanted to blow up the civilian court. This was not going to be unpunished. As Suwaki woke up Naruto and told him about it, Naruto made his way straight towards Hina Stone as he simply walked inside of Unki's office. Slaughteration started to happen outside as one of the Iwas members started to Skype everyone from where he was, taking them out one by one as Unki watched his council members fall as Naruto told him where his family were, where exactly they were hiding. As Oniki begged Naruto to stop when all of his council was dead. As Naruto gave him a warning, Oniki told Naruto that he made a powerful enemy today. As Naruto simply shrugged it off like it was nothing. As he left. 15 years passed after that. As the third great Shinobi war was going on. Many things had happened in the past 15 years. Team Namikaze was sent on a mission to blow up a bridge. But one of their members were captured and a boy was crushed on the road of stones. A girl from that same group was kidnapped and a beast was placed inside of her at the beast to destroy Konoha but Kakashi Hatake, the girl had jumped right on his attack killing herself to protect the village. No one knew how the bodies of the ninjas were slaughtered and the girl body was mysteriously taken away as no one really knew who did. Other than that, as Naruto was on the battlefield with the second Mizukage both him and Naruto has become great friends over the past 15 years. As the man was dying, yes he was. As Naruto looked down the dying man, over to the side Mew, the second Tishikage, the former, was also dying as well. As he took his final breaths, both Kage level ninjas had kicked it off out here and both of them had misshaped and changed landscape as the battle was, well, devastating. As Naruto felt broken up about the man dying, as many people has died over the past 15 years, including the Kazakage as well, as Raza had taken over his son, Raza had taken over, and the man had made sure the alliance stayed strong with Darkness Country. The man had went missing for months, 
and no one could find him. His troops were slaughtered. When he went on a random checkup in the sand farm, no one knew what happened to the man at all. Over towards the side where Kushina was, Kushina, who has grown in the past 15 years and now a ninja of darkness, she was with her teammate Kisame. Kisame used to bully her, as Naruto had told her why the boy acted that way. Kisame grew up in a well, bad family, where his father used to beat his mother. But bullying her was going to change anything like that. So she retaliated as she nearly blew up the school by playing pranks on him. But luckily, they got things sorted out. And they were able to become friends. They were saving a small family as they were bringing them out when they heard something going on outside. As Kisame quickly called on the radio, as they heard static, they then heard a man on the line tell them to run as they told him to get the family out of there. Namikaze, he was coming. So yeah guys, those basic guys for the thought you guys can switch across the place and check out for yourself. So this is begin this new episode. Kushina was no assassin. No matter how long and hard she tried to observe and attempt to copy and replicate the dark country assassination techniques that her teammates use, she didn't know how to do it quite well. She was raised in dark country and she was taught by the same teachers that trained her teammates in the academy. Dark country assassination techniques were scarcely similar to clan hidden art. They were closely guarded. They could not be learned or copied by not anyone specifically not taught by master assassins. As for Naruto training Kushina, his youngest student to discover, he made her discover her weakness and strength so that she could counterbalance the both of them and try to fashion a way so she could protect both ends. And Kushina was a powerhouse. Plain and simple, yes, she can be as silent and as quick as any other ninja, but her strength surpassed normal logic and pushed on into monstrous levels. Naruto was also a powerhouse, seeing that he was from the Kamuri clan. The smoke user clan that was known for their stamina and their strength and their muscle resistance. Orochimaru taught him everything, cover all of his bases and make him pick where he wants to move on his shinobi career. Naruto ended up owning his speed, his dexterity, his intellect, his creativity alongside his natural strength and the rest was history. Kushina was awfully effective and came to protecting herself and she could conjure up things in her mind rather quickly. Her swordplay was jagged and raw but like all Uzumaki, she could fine tune that in time. Her throwing jutsu bore potential, but the leader couldn't actively train her on it, seeing that he was at level 5, and Kushina can very much reach level 10. So he just gave her books and helpful pointers until she reached level 5, and there she would take it in her own hands to surpass that level. Most importantly of all, Kushina Uzumaki was very stubborn. Oh, the girl was stubborn as hell. Since the day that she said she wanted to become the leader of darkness, Naruto had started training her, even when she was on her last leg, she refused to give up. It wasn't easy at all for her. As Naruto was a very hard teacher to please, she would have to do something extremely acceptable to wiggle, a compliment out of his lips. When she reached 17, she got better and the compliments and the praise came out easier. She grew into her massive chakra reserves, probably the largest in the country and such she was able to throw her own titanic jutsus that would leave someone else drained. But she can simply just shrug it off. But whenever she was being too cocky about her reserves, she reminded herself about something her uncle told her a few years ago. It doesn't matter how large your reserves are. What matter is how well you use it. Is everyone ready? Said Kushna. As she helped the family through the back door. There were five members of the family. Two teenagers, a boy and a girl, around 12. And the parents and a paternal grandmother. She held on to the kid's hand even though they didn't like their hands held that much, seeing that they were teenagers and yeah, but still, they weren't complaining. Seeing that the person that was holding her hand was a red-headed beauty that seemed like an angel. As she knew that feeling very much as she saw the look on their faces, as she felt it every time she saw Uncle Ruto, as the parents was between them, their hands free of luggage, as Kushina had sealed away. They looked around in frantic eyes, trembling and holding each other. The grandmother was behind them. Moving as quickly as her body allowed her, the swordsman came up the rear, his eyes looking around, guarding the back, his hand clenched and unclenched, ready to lash out at any moment. The power coursing through Samihata was bubbling. Boom, my explosion rock! It's alright, it's alright, said Kushner. There was a near here. They nodded quickly as Kushner opened the back gate 
has been made their way out of a small compound. It was a great loss that the parents and grandmother will have to abandon their business and weave. They only had time to scrap up their profit, their invoice, and a few items in their inventory before Kushna team came and insisted that they hurry up. Kushna and Kisame stay behind to make sure they got out of here safety. While the other six made their way out to ensure they push away any forces trying to come here. There was a boat waiting for them that would go around Fire Country and make their way towards Darkland. Kisame laid out the point to the family, but he kept the rest of it hidden until they reached specific checkpoints. There could be people listening around, so that is why he never told them everything. Their grocery leader had informed them of the plant man after all. The creature could be listening on them, watching them at the very moment. And not even someone of Kushina's sensory ability could pick him up, unless he physically bring himself out of where he was hiding. None could sense him unless they were in tune with nature energy of a sort. Yes, you had to be a sage. Static could be heard over the radio. Come in Jonin Uzumaki. This is Jonin Sakana. She pulled out the receiver. Are you there Kushina? I'm here. What is it? Port 150 has been compromised. I repeat, Port 150 has been compromised. The sound of battle could be heard on the other side. But the person was speaking in a low voice and keeping their cool. Were being static. S static. It kept on buzzing in and out. We're being surrounded. Konoha ninjas engaging. Kushina stopped and turned. Kisame not as he heard as well. These bastards too stubborn. No major cadets to hear. We got authorization. Use. Port 1. 12. Got it. Sit tight Sakana. We can handle ourselves. Keep them safe. The family overheard that as they started to panic. As Kushina spoke up. Kisame and I have been on dozens of rescue missions and we haven't failed one. Our team has not lost a single life and no bodily harm has come to our charges. The family nodded, quietly paying attention to the serious Uzumaki leading away as the family felt like this was their fault. After all, they were told to come back home but the business was profiting so quickly and they wanted to get as much money as possible. After all, it would be split between them and half of it would go towards their country. But now, they were stuck when the war started and their leader hadn't hold anything back. He sent a full equipped team to bring them back with a personal boat. Their gratitude for their leader increased tenfold that he will still see them as this important and value their lives so much it humbled them. Rescue missions were different from escort missions given the current war that was going on at the moment. Dark ninjas were deployed to save citizens from the war torn country that they were in at the time. Such missions were done by Naruto ninjas alone. Because other villages had their ninjas out in other villages as well, their citizens that they had to save. But sometimes they team up and use defensive core. Kushna continue. On a mission like this, your life is our priority. We don't care about any injury that comes to us, but nothing must happen to you. Do you get me so far? They murmured, yes. Kushna stopped at the other end of the forest as he released the hands of the two children. She motioned for them to remain where they were. As Kisame finished for her, you five have to do everything we say you should do. They watched as two chains came from her shoulders as they went down her sleeves. They started to draw a seal on the ground as she patted her joining flap jacket twice. Living body switched seals. They were tiny and they were barely seen but they glow with chakra. As she unsealed five wooden logs from her jacket. Placed them over a switch seal. Drawing five seals. Thus, 25 logs were on the ground now. They were neatly arranged and hiding the level 8 seal. Kushner turned and she gave him a thumbs up. Alright, one at a time said Kisame. You will touch a log and it will take you all the way there. He pointed at the girl. Touch only one log. Close your eyes and count to three. The girl did as she was instructed and Kushner, on the other hand, did her part. Poof, 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 poof. Kushner caught the girl. Gotcha. As she placed her down, the same switch seal went off. As she caught the boy, this method of using seals was only done by Kushner. She could write seals using her chakra chains on any flat surface. Her limit was that she could write 10 seals at the same time. Naruto applauded her for it and she was smug for a long time. She caught the rest of the family that was switched over to her. Giving them 5 minutes to shake off business before they continue on their way. Kisame quickly made his way over the long drop. He used Sami had to destroy the seals as it absorbed the chakra from out of them. Kisame made his way as he knew that they were being watched. They were being followed after all. The two team that they brought with them had been surrounded and attacked. Not to mention the attacks were coming vigorously. Someone was following them and seeing their way out. Yes, they were definitely being targeted. Kushina looked over towards her friend. Konoha, she whispered. As she knew this, 
No other shinobis from any other settlement was attacking them. No samurais. It must be Kanoha. As Kisame hated how this plant man was making their job so much more difficult. As he glanced over to her. As she was holding on to the teenager's hands. As she simply shrugged. She might be their objective. Or better yet. The Kayubi that was sealed inside of her. Another target might be the unseen. Entrance seal on the back of the civilian's hands. Seeing that the two ninjas could cut off their hands easily and set them on fire before Konoha ninja came to them. But if they kidnap the citizen, they could use a seal in their hand to enter the village. Yes, they could pick them off rather quickly. The leaf thought once they got their hands on one of those seals, they would break it down and use it to infiltrate darkness. Kisame wasn't cocky enough to think that they wanted Samihata. They should know that only him or anyone he permitted could only use his sword. Kisame grinned, frightening the kids a bit. Who's up for a game, he said. The father looked at him and shrugged. Sure, why not? As he smiled some more, I spy with my little eye something that began with B. The girl knew what he was talking about as she whispered, Burrows. Rabbit Burrows, she said, as they were spotted over the hill. Correct. Your turn. The girl looked around, unsure. Um, I spied my little eye something that begins with B, she said. Her brother looked at her again. This one's different. She said as she glared towards her brother. Boom! Another explosion went off. As Kushner turned and she saw a smoke rise to the left. As she knew that in time the countryside would be taken over. She felt sad that the scenery was going to be destroyed for this stupid war. There was a thick black smoke coming from the fighting area like death itself. She guessed that smoke would cover a wave in about a week. I don't know the brother said as he looked around. He then looked up. Bird. The girl looked up. That was not what she was talking about, but... Kushna, Kisame said. Yeah, I'm ready, she said. Chains emerged from Kushna as a single bird with a sealer on his neck. Plunged down towards them. She wrapped the chains around the parents and the children pulled them towards her. More tight as you move off. Kisame grabbed the old woman. She screamed and wrapped her arms around his neck. The bird slammed into the ground as they move. As the thing exploded, the sealer in its neck blowing up the ground. Four yellow flashes burst from a thick smoke bomb. Minata swept his arm aside, blowing away the smoke as he stood with his comrades, looking towards the two high-class ninjas. Kushina had to make an effort not to blush, as she saw the similarity between the leader of the Konoha group, Minata Mikaze, and Naruto. The other three kept their eyes firm on them, as Kushina and Kisame kept their eyes firm on their opponents. As they knew them and their reputation. Fukaku Uchiha, Mikoto Uchiha, Hayashi Hayuga, and their leader, Minato Namikaze. The two Uchiha's and Hayuka's had their dojutsu activated. Minato smiled brightly. Sup, Kushina, he said. Those four look heavy. I can barely feel them. They might be heavy for a pretty like you. But I'm good, she said. The man laughed. I see, I see. I'm just saying, someone as cute as you shouldn't burden yourself in such a way. She raised Aaron. That's awfully fond of you, she said. I mean it. And I also think a lady of her class should not waste away in a place like darkness country. Oh. We, he said, motioned to his teammates, are here to take you back to your home. Sorry to disappoint you, man. But I've got a pretty good thing going on in darkness country. That's because you haven't fully experienced all the leaf can give you. How about it, Kushina? Won't you come back home with us, said Minato. Suddenly, Hayashi sighed as he mumbled. Minato, the veins at the side of his head pulsing a bit. Mikoto bashfully coughed into her fist, and Fukaku grumbled a bit. You've been talking to an illusion this whole time, you idiot. It was Minato turn to sigh. Kisame and Kushina looked at each other as they grinned playfully. The area around Kushina and Kisame rippled like a drop of water fall onto a still lake as it changed, showing the family of five that was there was no longer there. Two black cloaked ninja wearing blank white masks, but the two ninjas were still standing there. The plain mask, Noichi. Standing beside Kisame now, readjusted her mask with fidgety hands. Hayashi noticed that there were thick glasses under the eye hole, preventing him from seeing her face. The two root ninjas were beside Kushina and Kisame. The one by Kushina that was male flexed his hand to the shock of the Konoha ninjas. The illusional chakra, the chakra that he used to make the illusion around them, was sucked into his palm that had a ring on it that looked like an onion. The group was confused. How did he suck it back? It should disperse in the ear. And for some reason, the dojutsu users could not see under his mask. Hayashi could not see his face. While Zetsu had been feeding information to Kanoha 
by one of Jarea, reliable spies. A series of events has been happening that no one knew about. Flashback 10 minutes ago, root base, 16 miles away from the wave, country, Fire Nation. With all due respect, Ante Umar, I would like that you stay back and watch the base, said Onion as he marched down the dark hall of the root base. His head was buried into a scroll where he had received attributes, physical attributes about the family of five. As the plan had been changed a few minutes ago about the rescue team, Carrot was behind Onion as she was talking in a headset as she was giving description of the clothing that the family was wearing. Donzo is unconscious and the guards are not ready at the moment, said Onion. Umra looked at her nephew. I can be of great help, you know. I'm sure you will, but Master said that he only need Carrot and I. Umra pouted. When I see Master, I will ask him if there's anything that you can do. The woman's smile slapped his back. Thanks. They reached a dead end but Onion continued to walk as he passed through the illusion. He pushed open an old heavy looking door and passed into a forest as he looked up from the scroll. No fighting. And the forest was dense enough to cover up any near explosion. The place they exit out of was a chunk of a large artificial tree. They were very close to wave but not close enough to call attention to themselves. Here should be close enough to wave. Carrot stepped in front of him as she started to draw a seal on the tree. The fake tree, the root entrance. It was the exact seal that Kushner was drawing at that moment in Wave Country. A long range, living body switch seal. As she drew the same seal, she started to memorize, remember everything that the family was wearing, down to the lace color. As Onion started to mold the chakra around him, cover the both of them. It was like looking at a rainbow that was forming and twisting to make something beautiful. As it distorted and pushed very hard against the realm of reality, the parents and grandmother were simply clones that were reinforced with the chakra of the Krama. Young man, the jutsu could be used by anyone in the Krama clan. It was more detailed than a normal shell clone jutsu, but not more stronger. And the area, like the trees and everything, were distorted to make the animation look more realistic. When he was done, he started to change his sister illusion. By making her look at the young girl of Weave, he then changed his form to that of the boy. Umara smirked, even she was fooled. Auntie, turns out we're gonna need your help, said Carrot, as she wiped her forehead after finishing the seal. Fu and Jutsu did not come to her as easy as her Uzumaki friend. She brought the scroll and tapped on the seal. Kushina Chaka came out of the seal and merged it as it linked the both of them to the one in Weave Country. Umara clapped her hands. What do you want me to do, kiddo? she asked. Long range body switch. Carry a lot of energy. The 23-year-old, orange, root here Kunoichi said, as she found her mask in her backpack and slipped it on. The range as she and Kushina had formed was at 16 and a half miles, she told her aunt. The longer the switch, the faster whatever is coming from the side comes out. This is mainly used for creating traps and ambushes. So the people that are coming will come really, really fast. Like that, she snapped her finger, trying to explain how fast they were going to come. Think of this seal as a cannon and the people as cannonballs. They will be coming out stupidly fast. Don't worry, I'll catch them, Omar said. As the headset buzz. For Kisame telling the family to come over one at a time. They will be safe, said Omar. Alright, Onion said as he slid on his white mask under the illusion. As he gave his aunt a thumbs up. As he placed his hand on the tree, his chakra seeped into the seal, coming out on the other side where Kushina was. As he turned to Omar, one. Boom! The girl fly out of the seal quickly as Umara spread her hands. She caught the girl, her feet sliding back a bit in the ground. She used it two seconds to check if the girl was okay as she placed her to the side as Carrot slipped inside as she came out on Kushina's end. Two onions said, Boom! Kushina and the other hen had to mimic like she caught a person and actually she wasn't holding on to anything as a boy came over here. Three, boom! As Umara caught. The mother, boom, she caught the father. Over to the other side, Kushina pretended like he was catching the mother and father. But actually, she wasn't getting anyone. They were just illusions. Krama clan root mates came out as they smiled to the family, making them go in towards the root base where they would eat and rest until they were taken home the next day. Five, boom, as she caught the grandmother and placed her down gently. As Onion waved as he slipped into the seal, as Kushina caught him where he was, as he was an illusion of a little boy. As Umara showed him the signal, the sign that was Kurono. A majority of the Krama clan were now living in the root base. 
the forest near Konoha. In the forest of death, there was a large root base there. They had set up an illusion to make it look like they were all still back at the compound. Omura still refused to become Konoha ninjas and Saratoba still refused to give them money to live on. So they were sustained from the money that was sent to them by Naruto and also the painted jobs from fire Lady Wakuno that she wanted. Omura daughter, the whole of mania, the demon, was also inside the root base in Konoha. The Kurama clan was now the main people dominating root while the main forces were dying out slowly. In the flashback, back at the hidden wave, that illusion was very complicated, Mikoto said. Surprised that she was drawn into the trap as well. The informant had told them that nothing was amiss, even after they used a sweet seal, that the same exact person came out on the other side. But yet, they were illusions. Her red eyes searched for any speck of orange here, but the hoods were over their head and their masses. But she knew only a Kurama can do that, or Kurnai. The female spoke that was wearing a mask. She might be able to do it, but Kurnai is no traitor, said Minato. As Kurnai was already an infamous Genjutsu mistress. Believe what you want, said Kushina. So should we begin, she asked. Onion shook his head as he spread out his arms. His hand facing the four alarm ninjas. Allow me to put you all to sleep. He then paused as he heard a buzz in his ear. Uh huh. Yes, sir. I understand. Master wants to see how he face against some of Kanoha best. He looked over the group. I'll take the Hayuga, I guess. It wouldn't be the first time he fought a Hayuga. Root had dozens of them. Carrot looked over towards Onion. You mean he's here? She didn't wait for a reply. Dips on Mikato as she flexed her legs, sending wind chucker down towards them. She shot forward in a blur. The wind enhancement only lasts 3 seconds and it took Two to get to Mikato. The Uchiha raised her arm as Carrot Fist slammed against it. She was still unable to see under the mask eye holes because of the glasses. The blow tossed Mikato back and Carrot went after her. The other three Kanoha ninjas suppressed their shock at her speed. Hayashi slipped away from Shurikens coming towards him. His beer gun pulsed as he saw the illusion. As he was able to see through it, he had to quickly leap away as explosive tags exploded that was too close he yelled in his head as he separated from his team he almost didn't see the bombs because of the explosion is genjutsu could see past the illusion but at the last seconds a Krama doesn't have this kind of illusion of power he thought to himself kisame chuck as he launched himself forward bringing down samihata right on fukaku the uchiha slipped back as he flipped away kisame launched himself after him swinging down fukaku sharing on side coming as he twists but then Kisame smirked as the scales of Samihata lashed out towards him in mid-ear. He quickly substituted a piece of upturned earth as it was smashed to pieces. As he appeared crouching on the earth. As Kisame stood there with a smirk on his face, the sword danced in his hand. The scales did not tear or harm his uniform even though they just shred through that stone I mean to go. You almost dipped my arm, said Fukaku. I'll take your sword for that. How about I shave off your arms and legs? As the man smiled totally. After two weeks of absolute nothing, he was in need for a good fight. It's been a long time since I had a good meal. Don't be too afraid to scream. As a long purple tongue came out of a sword and licked its lips, Fukaku pulled a pair of kunais as Kisame leaped towards him. Kisame brought Samihata down. The sword then opened its mouth as Fukaku's eyes went wide. As the sharp teeth came pouncing down on him. Meanwhile, in an unknown era in the forest of death, my Lady Umara, I didn't think of you as someone to be so nefarious, Urchmar hissed. As he collected a scroll of dead bodies handed to him, the bodies were fresh and they were from a few remaining root operatives, the originals. To be an accomplice this old man dirty deals, I could never guess. Umara raised the eyebrow. I do what I must for my clan to survive. Your clan money problem would all blow away. Once you agree to spare a few, able-bodied ninjas for the war cause. A Kurama or two would push the war in our favor, Urchimaru said. I prefer not to aid the village that stole us out of her home. As she glanced down towards a comatose man in bed, it was Donzo. Oxygen mass over his face as he had on pure white clothing. Tubes and wire connected all over him. But you, Urchimaru, you gave me scumbag vibes. From the very first day, she said. She eyed him up and down. And you still do. Urchimaru touched his chest, looking offended. My lady. You hurt me with your words, he said. At least your disgusting habits are putting something in my pocket, she said. 
I hardly think that my medical services and my compensations are enough payment to cover up my activities and to keep providing me healthy test subjects. He snatched the scroll away. Still, if you were to throw in a few of your clan's meat, her eyes narrowed towards him. Uruchimar held his hands up. I understand, he said. I push my welcome. My apologies. You should leave, she said. Of course. Call me if you need anything else. As Urchimar left, hate that guy, she said. Three of her clan mates dressed as nurses entered the room. As they started to check Donzo vitals, as they looked over the arm that Urchimar had replaced with the one that was useless after a second shinobi war, when he had went up against Naruto, back when he convinced Hanzo that the Akatsuki was evil, his arm was totally, he had to amputate. This happened long before he had sent his root ninjas to bomb darkness. But the reason why he was in a coma, he had sent his root ninjas after Minato. But all of them got slaughtered by the blonde. He lost 50 or so of his ninjas to the boy Han. And this was before Minato turned 17. So Donzo went by himself to deal with the matter once and for all. Jirei could leave Minato by himself because he had gotten so much stronger. And Sakumo, who was watching over the boy as well, could not because he killed himself out of shame. The smoke demon clone did not have the original Naruto strength. It used a chakra in the body of the person that it possessed. And he didn't stand a chance against Minato. Danzo barely fled with his life. Barely. He had fallen into a coma once he came back to the root base. And Urchimar has been tending to his unconscious form ever since. The agreement that Danzo had with Urchimar was. For Urchimaru's scientific knowledge and assistant, Danzo would keep on providing him living and dead subjects and also help him cover up his kidnappings which was now getting the attention of the daimyo in doing so this meant that any study that urchimar had or he was doing danzo could ask about it and urchimar could not say no of showing danzo his findings but now that danzo was in a coma the chaos from the fight between danzo and minato had drawn in most of the kunawa shinobis they questioned minato of the identity of the person attacking him but he could not reply because danzo was in a disguise Harrison, who knew the culprit, visited the empty Shamira compound and warned Donzo never to cause a commotion like that again. The third might have hated Minato because of who he looked like and what he knew. But he always have a soft spot for his bitter rival. As Donzo slipped into the coma, Umura Krama became the head of the illegal Konoha organization root. Five years ago, the war broke out and the Krama clan moved to the root base. Using that grand illusion to hide the fact that they weren't in the compound, it was nearly empty. The only person that was allowed to enter or visit was the Hokage. So, no one would find out anytime soon. Given the fact that they weren't on good terms with the Hokage, he wouldn't stop by to visit. The leaf was becoming unsafe for them, but the leader had to order them to come back to darkness. So, Umura made Root their second base. The clan had met up with Onion and Terrat, who were being trained by Root veteran Shinobis. And they started to dominate the entire organization. Five years ago, Root stopped being the roots of the Great Tree. They were now the spies of the Great Tree. Anything they found out about their home darkness, they would report it to their leader, Naruto. And they dismantle anything that was set up to destroy their home. But they respect the order of their leader, who told them not to actually destroy the village. The organization continued their underhand means, like what Root always did. But this time, the funding was not going to Konoha. It was split between going back home and for the clan. But the real Naruto insisted that they keep all the money that they got. He also limited the missions that they went on. They gather information about the globe. And they also sabotage any leaf plan that they had against darkness. Naruto didn't want them to do any of the things that Danzo wanted. Any of the terrible things that real Danzo wanted. Like the shadow plan that he had to invade and wipe out snow to take over the resources. And they already have their hands full. Reporting to him on the grand schemes that Konoha was planning up. He also told him to leave Minato B. If he found a chance, he would look into his blonde look-alike. Back at Wave Country, seems I have to settle for you, said Kushina. As she cracked her knuckles, she bounced on her feet like a boxer. Her purple eyes searched around for her teacher, whether it was a flick of his chakra or him being here, anything. She wasn't even sure how he could hide his presence from her, after all. Not when she had her sensory abilities amplified by the Kayubi steel in her gut. But Onion said that he was here to see how they face off against Kanoha Bess. Where are you, uncle? You act like that's a bad thing, said Minato. 
making her focus back on him. He seemed completely calm despite the battles going on around him. I'm curious, is it true that you're a cowardly leader? It's scary that the war might break his country. Is that why he's hiding and not helping in the war effort at all? Minuta asks with a smirk on his face. Nah, he's just not in picking sides. So he made his own side. Wait, I'm sorry? You said something about him being a coward? I wasn't paying attention. The ghost, Minuta spat. Isn't as strong as he was back in the second war. Admit it. Cushion a scarf as she lowered her face. Peering up at the leaf ninja under her bangs, her purple eyes ripple as her smirk wide to show her sharp canines. If you're trying to piss me off, it's not working. Oh, I beg to differ, said Minato. Oh, this? She motioned to her dark, malicious face. This is my sleepy face. I want to get this fight over with and go for a nap. So, can we get this over with? Whatever the lady wants, Minato said, as he lowered himself into the humming, fist fighting style. Some place nearby, close enough to see the fighting and yet, far enough to be undetected. Naruto was watching everything as he had on glasses. As he moved off, Kushina ear twitched as her head spun to the right. Uncle? As Naruto walked out from behind her, like he came out of nothingness. Yo, he said. As the girl blushed, a bright red mark spreading over her nose, taking over her cheeks. As her heart started to beat a bit faster, the thought of him standing behind her did nothing to lessen her embarrassment of her being aware. Where did you came from? He looked around. Somewhere around here, he said. He then pushed his glass back up his nose and smiled. Addressing his niece. You both have to forgive me for intruding on your fight. An explosion went off to where Hayashi and Onion was fighting. He looked apologetically at Kushna. I will be his opponent. Her eyes enlarged as the blush reduced. But uncle, I'll make it up to you, he said. Her anger dim a bit. We'll go for some ramen and ice cream when we get back home. My treat. As he patted her head, just like when you were a kid. She puffed out her cheeks. I'm not a kid, she said. He gushed and brought her into his side with his right arm. You'll always be a kid to me, Nana, he said. She pushed him away. It's not fear. And it's Kushna. Ko she na He simply bobbed her on the nose, Nana. As her hair separated the nine strands, Chakra from the Kayube surrounded her. But Nurta simply stood beside her chuckling. Hey! As the both of them slowly turned their head. What makes you think you can interrupt me and the lady? Said Minato. As Naruto walked past Kushina, who was cooling down, Minato went into his fighting style. No longer playing her own, completely serious. Answer me, damn it! As Naruto kept on walking, as he shrouded himself in lightning and water chakra, he stopped five feet away from Minato, looking directly into his eyes. He saw hate, resentment, wrath. He saw how much Minato wanted him dead, with his heart and soul, as Naruto's eyes squirted on a bit. Jiraiya, lie to you kid, he said. Minato's eyes narrowed as he growled, flicking his wrists, summoning three, kunais into his hand, into each, making six, as his mind calculated fast. After all, being someone that can use a higher chain, he thought really fast, thinking about the position of three kunais to move and remove the ghost's head quickly. I'm not your father. No, you're lying. He leaped forward, scattering two kunai in his hand, away. Lightning coursed from his body with each step, and Naruto remained unmoving. His right hand moved forward with a sharp blade, aimed for Naruto's heart. The ghost simply stepped to the side as he slapped Minato's wrist up in the air. The kunai flying up in the air as he backhanded Minato away. The boy fly into the ground, creaking a trench. Kushina blinked rapidly. Her senses could barely keep track of Minato's speed. Worse her uncles, she didn't even see him move. Minato was holding the kunai one minute moving forward the next. He was in a trench. As Naruto made his way over, as Minato shakily get back to his feet, I'll beat it into your head if I have to, said Naruto as he cracked his fist. Minato bared his teeth as he flashed away, as Naruto turned and blocked a jab towards his head, bringing his other arm down as he blocked the kick, before he twists Minato and back at him away once again. A trace of lightning flowed through Naruto's arm as he fired it off. It slammed into Minato's abdomen. He grunted as he stepped back after a savage blow, holding onto his stomach painfully. As Naruto observed him, I don't know who your mother was. What I know is that she was a member of the Kamori, a member of my clan. Stop talking! The ghost tilted his head as a fist past his face. He slammed his hand right under Minato's chin, cracking his head up to the sky. Minato's speed could be a problem for Kushina. Naruto would just go as far to say that he was a match for Kushina. Minato flashed away again as he held onto his chin. Tell me this kid, said Naruto. 
Haven't you ever wondered why everyone in your village hated you? But Jerry has still entrusted you to Sakumo Hatake. He turned and blocked Minato's fist by grabbing his hand. He then yanked the arm down with so much force. That hand will need some time to recover. As he drive a kick into the boy's stomach, knocking him away. Minato stumbled as he held on to his unresponsive arm. Blood was leaking out from the left side of his mouth. Lies. You're just lying. Trying to mess with my head. You're a sensor type kid. Touch sensor if I remember correctly. As Nurka slapped away a kick to his shoulder and chopped his hand on Minato's right shoulder, Quest didn't start to flood Minato's head as he flashed away once again, wondering how Nurka knew so much about his upbringing. You would never wonder why Sakumo, like Nafinte, felt so much familiar. Minato's arm burned with pain from the point where Nurka hit him down to his fingers. My spies said that Sakumo could barely look at you, yet he couldn't throw you away, unlike when you were a baby. Don't. Don't! The sooner you can accept, the sooner you can see how filthy your village is. Kanoha is too faced and corrupt. As Nurka blocked the aim towards his nose and drive the foot down into the ground, he kicked away Minato's good leg, forced the boy on his knees. Look into it yourself, said Naruto, knowing that the doubt has started to set in Minato's mind. I am not completely sure why he abandoned you as a child and then accepted you into his home in his family later on. What I do know is that Jerry knew the truth, but he made up this lie to put someone like you against me. Images start to flash through Minato's head as his face lowered. As he started to remember something. He was nine years old at the time. I don't want anything to do with him. Sakumo snapped under his breath. The Hatake clan living room was well lit and Minato was hiding around the corner. Hearing the conversation between the great here man and his mentor, Jiraiya of the Sunning. He's the past I want to forget. But Jiraiya was serious as he jabbed a finger in Sakumo's chest. He's the past that you have to accept, Sakumo. Man up and take some damn responsibility. Have some respect, Toad. I'm still grieving my wife. Take that boy and get him out of my house, said Sakumo. Is it because he looked like the ghost? Or is it because he looked like that woman, Jiraiya said? It isn't the boy's fault for being born. It's your fault for raping his mother. Accept what you did and move on. Be silent, Jiraiya, the man says he clenched his fist. His gaze turning towards his late wife. A photo of her. He knew. He knew. No self-respected dark woman would ever lay in the bed of a Kanoha man or woman, much less sleep with them. Yes, none of them, no matter what you did, they hated Kanoha that much. But to the victor, go the spoils. Sakumo, in a weakness, his body was filled with sake, his mind was clouded with sake. In a moment of weakness, he saw Minato's mother clean that table of a group of past old Konoha ninja. It was a time of war when Konoha was raving darkness for what they had. The woman looked at them darkly, thinking about whether to slit their throats or not as they slept, as some of them had passed out unconscious. Sakumo wanted her badly, but she turned him down and his mind filled with rage. Who the hell did she think she was? Did she not know of a legend that was Sakumo Hatake? The leaf white fang. Where did you even find his surname? He blinked. Coming out of the memory of the day, his life fell apart. He cast his eyes away from his late wife. Shame pouring off of him. Minato's eyes widened behind the stairs. I, I didn't mean to hurt either of them, said Sakumo. I was just so angry. She rejected me. Can't you understand? Kamiri clan or not, no one deserved what you did. We were invading their home. Why would she ever accept you, Jerry? I said the frown. You broke. Karen was hurt and I will never forgive you for that. This might be your chance to redeem yourself. I advise you to take it. In the flashback, a repressed memory? No. He had just never accepted that it was him that they were talking about. That is why he never thought about that. He told himself there was some other boy in the house that they were referring to. He pretended that he never heard the conversation that night. Throughout his stay in the nearly vacant, Hatake, compound, Sakumo, had refused to look him in the eyes. You were born in dark country. That is why you are able to use assassination techniques. But someone, probably Sakumo, took you to Konoha. Maybe he couldn't bear looking at the physical reminder of his sins and judgments. He wasn't the only Konoha ninja that raped and took advantage of the people from my stop talking. But you were the only product of abuse that was taken away, said Naruto. The cold, hard truth is, kid, I don't see it as a problem or as a threat. Minato grit his teeth, his unresponsive body tremble. There are at least 30 people on the continent claim to be related to me. But when I look into them, they're not even from my clan. A Ronin from Iron Country claimed that she was Nurta's niece. A man from Kumo claimed that he was Nurta's younger brother. A man from Chill was claimed that he was his distant uncle. Many, many people were spreading their names around. 
using your hotel name to improve their status. When my source in Kanoha told me about you 13 years ago, I think you were the 11th person on that list. The only difference is that you're actually related to me. And most of them are dead, killed for sports by your trolling. Naruto did not have any children, and not from lack of trying, as he saw how hard Minato was taking it. Years and years of hating his so-called father and now all of that was being torn down. He tried to find something to grasp onto, but all of that slipped away from him. I am truly sorry for all the people of your precious village treated you for looking at me, but you're not some impersonable, uninformed kid. You're an adult now. Don't be spoon-fed information when you can go out and get it yourself. Don't simply swallow what I told you. Not like when you were a kid and Jerry told you that I was your father. Don't accept that Kanoha was ill-treated by darkness in the second Shinobu war. Don't think that because you're a prodigy, only you can put me down. Or that I need putting down. They programmed you, Minato. Molded and they carved you into something. Less human, more for puppet. Open your eyes and find out the truth on your own. Doubt. Doubt in his ambition. Doubt in his very ninja way. Doubt in his uh, existence. When something like that takes root in the mind of a fanatic, Especially like someone who was strong and influential as Minato. It's gonna change the world big. It will shake down Kanoha to his foundations. This was what Naruto wanted. Kanoha demise would come quicker this way. And he or his ninjas had to do anything. The questions plagued Minato's crumbling mind. Would Jerry really lie to him? Was Sakamoto's real father? Wasn't it darkness that wronged Kanoha and not the other way around? I'll spare your life this time kid, but pray. I don't meet you for a second time. Not even your nifty Harrison seals can help you. As Naruto waved his hand, orders other ninjas to move away. As they did. More Konoha ninjas start to make their way onto the field. Naruto paused as Minato staggered to his feet. Used his one leg for support. As his two arms are at his side, blood leaking from his mouth. He was beaten soundly. You want to say something? He spat out blood. I'll kill you, ghosts. One day, I'll kill you. We'll see about that, said Naruto. The disappointment leaking from him was great. Wasn't he a prodigy? The fight that he was waiting for his entire life had come. And he failed. Badly. After all of his training, he wasn't even able to get a glance. Not even a single touch on the ghost. He couldn't even touch him. His legs gave out as Mikato caught him before he could hit the floor. The ghost was gone in a burst of smoke. And the other dark ninjas burst away. The Uchiha lady was badly bruised. Slash on her cheek. Her. This had protected her as it was many slashes all over her. The masked woman that she fought in came out with burn marks on her left arm. Her eyes stopped as he returned back to normal. Hayashi and Fukuoka came out, all of them in a bad condition. She looked down at Minato. Something was wrong, she could see it. What did he do to you, Minato? She said. But guys, it'd be in subscribe right here. If you want the next part of the do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications they posted. Remember to share this all with your friends in your social media platform. And also go ahead and check out what if Naruto was betrayed by Hagoromo. And enjoy that guys. And stay tuned for the rest of the what ifs coming your way. But for now, I'm out for you. See you guys soon. Peace.